surfing is quite similar to, to farming in the, in the way that you, know, you can do all you can to ensure you have a kind of productive crop but sometimes nature kind of has different ideas and kind of like this morning I suppose it's, it's still a beautiful morning but we didn't really get the harvest we were after. <laughs> but there's another, another couple of ways around the corner that we can, we can definitely go and surf. I dreamt, dreamt of being a surfer originally and dreamed of surfing around the world and I did. Got sponsored and you know paid to be to go ride waves, which is an amazing time, an amazing privilege to be able to do it. But at the end, you know, I was traveling and traveling and I was getting paid to, you know, book another flight and go another location and and after, you know, flight after flight and tra trip after trip, I was just like, something doesn't feel right here anymore. Like there was a point in my life where I took 28 international flights in a year. I suppose we've been lucky enough to have, have yeah, been traveling and realized that it's not what we want to do too much anymore. The original essence of a surfer is someone who's very in touch with nature. It doesn't make sense to be someone who cares about nature, but I just keep getting on flights to go surfing. And I'm not really doing anything else other than that. I love Ireland more than anywhere I've ever been. Basically, that's where the light bulb moment was, and it took me a couple of years to stop my flights. I pretty much lost most of my sponsors because of it. I basically had to tell myself this is, this is enough now. That bulb you're holding there, that's it's, a lovely bulb. Yeah, it's a good one. So every clove is going to be the gene of that bulb. Ah, uh, yeah. So you're, just, you're going to get the same genetics as that one. Yeah. It takes years to get a lovely type of garlic. My parents started their organic vegetable farm about 30 years ago. So I grew up with that and I always knew I'd come back to growing food because I always loved doing it. But I didn't want to do it just for myself, but I really wanted to try and teach my friends who are also surfers. Right. Yeah. Naturally, they've kind of stopped traveling so much, and yeah, we kind of run this farm together. I'd never planted anything or, you know, a tree or any kind of food and had absolutely no idea how to feed myself. It dawned on me that maybe I should come back and plant some more trees and, and do my bit. We've been lucky enough to get a piece of land that we can plant thousands of trees on and, and feed lots of people really organic food, you know. It's definitely hard work, but um, we enjoy it. We absolutely love it to bits. I think there's a, a real connection to surfers wanting to do something for the environment, but there's not really many outlets for surfers to do that. Our goal is to make farming attractive to young people and get more young farmers. That's what the world needs. It's a really nice feeling seeing like 10, 15 people out in the field working together all by hand, sitting down with your, your neighbours and a bunch of friends having big, big lunches and getting loads of work done. As a surfer you, you generally have a lot of free time. I mean farming's perfect because you just, when you're not surfing you can come and you know, you work together and, and then when there's waves you can, as long as there's not really pressing jobs you can go for a surf. So yeah, this is what makes it all work. All the work possible is you can look down there, see if there's any waves. And if there is, you can go up. Oh, let's go. That one there is my, my old favourite. I rode it for about four years and I've brought it all over the world and I try and keep it in one piece. Yeah, this is a, a photo from quite a few years ago kind of nearby. Um, you go around the world looking for ways of that and we have them around the corner. It was definitely when I was a full-time surfer, not just a farmer. You know, we're told that there's 60 harvests left before the world gives up on us. To not kind of take that in would be kind of bonkers. I, you know, I'd love everyone else to change the way they live. I 
first have to change the way I live, you know. And for me, I'm learning as much from not going anywhere as I ever did from going anywhere. Yeah, it's been a pretty cool journey not leaving. It's all for the environment, you know. Everything that we do here is, that's the number one priority, is to, to care for the land here. And, and in doing so, we care for the land everywhere, you know. We're at a time in history that we can't just bury our head in the sand anymore. You know, we're the generation that can be doing something about it. We're old enough and young enough to think for ourselves and, and do something. I have now a daughter and another child on the way and it's, it's too important to just say, yeah, it's a, I need to go make more money because like, money isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to make our, our kids' future brighter. It's having clean air and water and good food and a strong community and those are the real values that we all actually look for. The farm, the whole reason I stay here is because, yeah, I suppose we, we, um, we created it. Yeah, it's hard to walk away from anything that you created. I suppose surfing gives you a great connection with nature and you really learn to, to respect every, every part of it. I felt there was more I could be doing than, yeah, just riding good ways. And the thing is, I can ride good ways and be a farmer as well, so I didn't feel like I was, I was losing out, really. Oh.